Uh, hello, and welcome to Nodes 2021. Um, my name is uh, Jim McHugh. I'm the VP of Emerging Markets Portfolio at Big Bear AI. I'm here with Justin Rasband, a data engineer and a full stack developer here at Big Bear AI. Hello. Uh, we're uh, going to speak to you today about a challenge that we had uh, converting uh, a, a relational database into Neo4j. To start us off, Justin's going to give us all of our uh, background information and how we came up with the solution that we are presenting to you today. Justin? Good day, everyone. Uh, as Jim introduced, we have been responsible for engineering a data paradigm shift uh, from our client who is very used to using a legacy relational database and wants to get a little bit more on the cutting edge. Uh, we've had some different ups and downs with that, and as part of the requirements from our user and, and some of what our data model has uh, required, we've really explored a lot of ETL options and come up with one that we think is a little bit unique. We'd like to share it with you, talk a little bit about the reasons why we're using it, and see if it can fit into uh, your toolbox as an option when it comes to ETL from a relational database into Neo4j. Next slide. So I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the background of our situation, a little bit of the background of the client and what they uh, want to use Neo4j for. They're coming from, as I said, a legacy relational database that stores characteristics and performance data for vehicles. Uh, lots of data about how they perform, uh, what all the different components are and their measurements and how they fit together. This database that they've been using has is, is been around for a long time and has uh, provided a lot of issues for them in terms of keeping it up to date uh, with the most current information. Uh, it's provided some issues for them when it comes to sharing that data to the several clients and services that consume it. And they also have a lot of requirements that they want to add about limiting the releasability of that data at various levels of that characteristics. Um, so there's a lot of metadata needs that are coming along with this. When we heard some of their needs, we heard some of their pain points, and we started looking at some of the desired solutions requirements that they wanted, including that flexibility, enhanced ability to search and share that information, and of course, uh, increased performance, something that I think is required by almost all of our uh, clients. We naturally started to look at Neo4j as a potential solution uh, to provide that. I'm going to go over just a little bit of why we chose Neo4j and what our data model has come up uh, as so that you can understand a little bit better uh, why we chose this ETL tool and understand it as Jim demos it a little later on. Next slide, please. So some of the benefits we immediately saw with Neo4j would be the flexibility of that schema list database, the ability to add new data in uh, as it gets characterized for their characteristics and performance data sets, and uh, do all of this without the requirement of a database administrator uh, updating a schema or an index to make that happen. They also really liked the hierarchical way we can store data. As you can start to imagine, a lot of these vehicle performance sets or component data listings, they kind of roll up into one another as you know, a piece of an engine becomes an engine and an engine becomes a part of the car. Uh, they really enjoy the ability to segment and hierarchicalize their data. So Neo4j seemed a natural fit to that. Uh, indeed, there's a few other things that were required to do with that hierarchy in terms of mapping data from their existing solution. I'm going to cover that in a little bit as well, um, because that has forced us to use not only an, an ETL tool, uh, but also kind of an interesting way to map that data with it. Uh, moving forward, though, they also really enjoyed the querying that comes with Neo4j, that pattern matching that almost sounds like a, a natural language kind of query. It enables you to get at the data you're in interested in without performing a lot of complex joins. They see a lot of potential uh, beyond what they're used to in traditional advanced searches where you are very limited to what's in the database and defined in the schema. Um, some other benefits of Neo4j are the ability to share what's in Neo4j, export and import that data through queries and, and other tools. And of course, that increased performance uh, as you drop the need for uh, joins in your SQL statements 
and you allow those granular insert edits and updates on your data elements. And uh, even on top of that, put in some application performance metrics that are provided by other third-party tools. There's just a lot that Neo4j has to offer. Uh, next slide here. <clears throat> so once we uh, discussed Neo4j with our clients and we, we felt really good about it, we decided to start building out our data model. And you'll see some of those things we've talked about uh, come into to play here. We really needed a data model that is highly flexible. Uh, and so we made one that is highly generalizable. A lot of those measures and, and things that were columns in the relational database, we turn those into attribute nodes in ours and use various kind of labels or relationships to get those to even more specific uh, kinds of measures, such as max engine RPM uh, or other ones. But we can treat these nodes and these data elements as very uh, very generalizable individual things that can support new types of data and new things that will be characterized or measured in performance uh, as our client grows. We also formatted this data in a hierarchy, one that allows you to group these attributes together uh, around logical ideas or physical components or performance sets, and thereby be able to get to the data that you're interested in really quickly um, or segment it so that you can only see parts of it. And that kind of feeds into our metadata needs where the users really like the ability to tag these pieces of metadata at any level from either an intermediate node that is grouping a number of attributes or an individual attribute itself. We're able to provide metadata that limits the releasability or viewership of a node that denotes when or uh, it became active and when it became invalid or inactive and the source uh, for those data elements. The result of all of this has become a data model that is could be characterized as a root, uh, excuse me, a web of root nodes, each of those nodes containing a hierarchical web of data and attribute uh, relationships, uh, as well as relationships to other nodes. Once we were satisfied with the data model, we knew exactly where we were going from, we knew what we wanted to go to, but we needed to find an ETL tool to get us there. Next slide. And one of the requirements that our uh, users had given upon us is that they really want an explicit mapping for every uh, element in their current data and how it's going to turn into this hierarchy. It is a true data paradigm shift from anything that they're used to. And they didn't want us to provide them an ingest and then an, a number of iterative uh, transformations to get to this hierarchy. They want to know exactly how it's working. So we started looking at some of these options and seeing how we could document that and fit with it. Uh, we looked at doing just individual cipher, cipher scripts, reading from their database and writing uh, into Neo4j, but that manual process was just going to be very long for the, the sheer uh, size and magnitude of attributes that we had to cover. Similarly, loading to, uh, from Excel was also going to be an issue. That's another uh, popular ETL tool that can be used in some uh, Neo4j project products. We also looked at GraphQL, which at the time was somewhat limited uh, in its use cases. It seemed like it was best at transferring relational database tables into individual nodes, where one node almost represents a table from that database. Uh, as we looked at a lot of these ETL solutions, they seemed that overall they were just a little bit immature or costly or didn't provide that solid mapping that was going to make our client comfortable with how this data was going to turn into Neo4j. And so we started looking at other options. We eventually came up with a translation document that documents exactly where everything's coming from, where it's going to, and an ETL tool called NIME that helps us uh, ingest the data, uses that translation document to put it exactly where it needs to go, and gives our client the ability to access, query that data, all with the comfort of knowing that everything they want to see is still there. It's tagged correctly and uh, we'll provide a lot of value to them. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who's going to go over a little bit on that uh, translation document, the NIME workflow, and even give you a demo. Jim? Thank you, Justin. Uh, as you can see, <clears throat> we have this really different way of customizing our solution. So um, we came up with this CSV document, and we started, uh, this is kind of what it looks like, Probably hard to see there, but we'll go through each piece. It's broken up into four basic pieces, uh, and this is how we transform the data. The first is, this is our from. 
This is our relational database. We pulled this out of the data model, um, just reverse engineered it. We have our table, our column name, and our data type. This is important to us because this helps us understand um, what we actually are pulling in and what we need to do to that attribute. The next uh, is our destination node uh, creation. So here we have a, a and the type of insert, which is important, we, we add labels. We also add the hard-coded properties. And then finally, you'll see the destination property. And this is the value uh, that we're going to put in from the relational table. So if we select in the top part, it's ID. Um, that is actually a VIN, so we uh, the vehicle identification number, so we put that in there. The next section is uh, a relationship information. So um, when we have to create relationships, um, in this case, we're showing how the VIN is related to a category. Uh, so a vehicle class is, is related to a platform class. Uh, so this, this is uh, one example of how we, uh, again, customize those relationships between uh, different nodes. And our final section is the node hierarchy. Uh, this is this is where Justin had spoken about uh, this customization that the that the customer wanted. Uh, all of this information lives in a single table in a relational database. But now, as you can see, we have different uh, sections, uh, and in some cases even different subsections. Uh, we have um, we have different uh, 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 vehicles, uh, like a hybrid vehicle that might have. Uh, an electric engine, as well as a, a standard combustion engine. Uh, so we're able to put all of this into areas uh, that is easily to for us to ingest. Uh, as you see, that subsection has uh, little brackets around it. That brackets uh, we used as a little code for ourselves to say, hey, there can be one or more of these inside of uh, this table. Uh, so, uh, Let's move over to the NIME workflow. Um, as you may have seen earlier today uh, in the data science section, uh, there was a NIME uh, orchestration with Neo4j at 1045 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Uh, that gentleman did a great overview of uh, NIME, its connection nodes, and, and how and why he used it. Uh, I, I recommend you go back and, and, and check out his, his uh his session as well. So um, why did we choose NIME as our tool? Well, it's open source. So that equals cost effectiveness. Uh, uh, NIME is free if you're not using the server. And since this is a one-time kind of uh, ETL, we're just uh, going to convert all this data. And then uh, once it's in Neo4j, uh, the customers will maintain it from that point forward. So no need to, to spend lots of money on an ETL tool. Uh, NIME is a great, uh, a great tool that we can use for that. Uh, the other reason why we chose uh, NIME was because it had existing Neo4j 4x connections, um, which was important. We did look at other, uh, other ETL tools, uh, but they did not have the most up-to-date Neo4j um, connections. And finally, um, NIME allows us to do some very fine-grained um, access and, and transformation of data. And that's what really uh, makes this solution shine. Uh, so here's an example of our, uh, our read uh, of the CSV. So um, first, uh, there's a number of CSVs. Uh, we broke them into groups. Uh, we loop through that CSV list, read row by row. Now, you might be saying, hey, that doesn't sound very efficient, um, but uh, it does get us the fine-grained uh, placement of data where we want it. So that's why that is important. And then a couple of cleanup steps, if it's empty, we don't want to waste time um, worrying about that uh, particular step. Uh, and the next, we have a connection to an Oracle database at the bottom there. We also have a, a connection to a Postgres database. So uh, they do different uh, things, but the main part is the bottom. 
the Oracle connection. Uh, that top part created that select statement that we were looking for. Now we execute that statement and take those variables and move them through the process. Again, as I said earlier in the presentation, we needed to know if it's a text uh, or a number or a date, or we even have multimedia stored in the database. So we want to get that out and put it into an S3 bucket. Uh, so as you can see, there are different uh, ways through this, uh, either text, date, or multimedia. And then we come out, these, these uh, particular nodes here creates uh, cipher scripts uh, that we can execute here at the end. There are two of these. One is to create a node, and the other is to create a node state, because when we create the attributes, um, we create attribute states because we did want to allow for uh, historical records moving forward. Uh, so time for the uh, live demo. So I'm going to hop over here, show you uh, what we have here. So this is uh, our NIME workflow, uh, as you can see, uh, just as you saw before. Uh, the magic are in the Java snippets here. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, we set up the values, and based on that insert type, it tells us, hey, we're going to create a root node, or we're going to create an association node, or we're going to create a section or a subsection uh, throughout the process. And based on what, we, uh, what sections or what nodes we're creating, that tells us uh, of what the cipher script is going to look like. Um, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And uh, I will uh, to show the completion of the demo. I'll make sure that there's nothing in here. As you can see, there was 85,000 records in here. There's nothing up my sleeve. Still have zero in there. And then we're just going to run this. And as you can see, this will run really fast. This is doing some uh, uh, creation of uh, nodes to our to our database, if I actually connected to the database, I apologize for that. I lost my connection. We'll try to get and reset. One more time. That, there it goes. Almost still running. So as you can see, once you connect to the database, it runs really fast. Um, uh, it, it's rolling through each, each one, connecting to the database, and writing it out in the Neo4j writer. Uh, again, I'll go back and show you that new nodes are being made. 408, 415, 430. And we'll show you how you can select a record. Looks like I'm not up to that yet. Um, but we are doing this uh, in a relatively quick fashion. So um, this solution, again, provided our customer with the ability to show them uh, absolutely where, the, um, where they wanted to put their record uh, in the database and uh, meets all of their requirements. Again, the speed, as, as was shown in today's keynote, is impressive and uh, meets our customers' needs. Uh, with that, uh, we will uh, end the session for uh, now. We've done our live demo. And we ask you to uh, uh, hold all your questions, and we will give you answers during the question and answer section at the end uh, of the next session. So from myself and from Justin and everybody here at Big Bear AI, uh, thanks for attending our session and uh, thanks for attending Nodes 2021. Have a great day.